What's up, Keep Pounding Crew? We are back with another video. Today's topic is day four of training camp, back together Saturday. If you like the videos, if you like the channel, if you like the content here, and if you like the streams, hit that like button, hit that sub button, hit that bell. So like Take all the next right onto East below. Pearl Street. And also be sure to check out the Facebook group page. Keep pounding in all caps for in-game posts, polls, opinions, and reactions to NFL news, as well as scheduling for uh, the channel. In 300 feet, turn right onto North Church Street. So let's get into Take this. Take the next right uh, onto North Church Street, then use the right two lanes to turn slightly right onto US 221 North. Today was a very interesting day uh, for a number of reasons. And I mean, I guess we just start with uh, the quarterbacks and stuff. And yes, I do have blue teeth because I've been eating uh, the shaved ice. <laughs> but ignore that. Um, please excuse that. But uh, let's start with the quarterbacks. Uh, Sam Sam Darnold looked a bit shaky today. I don't know about y'all, but I saw a little bit of shakiness, a little bit of indecision from Sam today uh, from the start, but he started to recover once he got further and further into the 7 on 7s. In contrast, Baker did the opposite, and that concerns me a little bit because uh, Use the right watching, two lanes to turn slightly right onto US 221 North, North Church Street. I was watching the C3 podcast and... Continue on US 221 North for half a mile. And they were talking about how he had the indecision with the football. Um, he held on to it too long. The internal clock uh, discussion. And um, he just basically checked it down when there are open receivers. Yeah, In a quarter a mile, slight today. right onto US 221 North. And I was a little surprised. But at the same time, not. You know? Because I do trust that a lot of the podcasters are getting a Slight right onto US 221 info, North, then turn left onto the I-585 North ramp. For a number of years... Especially the Cleveland fans, you know, that are doing podcasts and stuff. So, I trusted that info. And I did indeed see what they saw. So, I'm not sure what that... Turn left onto the I-585 North ramp, then merge onto I-585 North. that's going to affect us down the road if we decide to put Sam Darnold as a starter. That could lead to good or bad things, depending... Uh, if our wide receivers can get open enough, then I don't see... Continue on I-585 North for four miles. You know, out of the gate. But it will become a problem once you get into the tougher games. Now, if the wide receivers are not open, then I don't see a problem at all. You know, because that's on the wide receivers to get open and be ready to go. You know, to catch some of these balls. Uh, and speaking of the wide receivers today, you saw a little bit of uh, everything, really. You saw Zalstra get a, a catch or two. You saw Shai Smith get involved. You saw um, Terrence Marshall Jr. with a great play. And one of the big things that I was looking for was yards after the catch. Mind you, they're not wearing pads, but I wanted to see how far... They were willing to make these like shake and bake moves, you know, after they catch the ball to get a couple of extra yards. And I saw exactly what I wanted to see. It made me happy. Um, there's a few names that I could point out. I will do so on the stream. That will be coming at around 3 this afternoon. But uh, so far, so good. You know, as far as yards after the catch and, and being smooth about that stuff, man. That's what you need to see. Um, moving on to the tight ends. I saw Tommy Trimble drop a couple of them. 
which, I mean, that's, that's a little bit of a concern, I'm going to be real with you, because he never really had that issue to begin with up until this point. Um, again, it is training camp, maybe I'm making a mountain out of a molehill here, but it concerned me a little, to be real with you. Um, in contrast, you saw Ian Thomas catch a few balls and, and really redeem himself today compared to day one when I was out there before, which made me very, very happy. Um, yeah, the tight ends were very, very involved today. Richie got involved as well. And, um, I saw a very good block by the running backs, moving on to the running backs, on a particular run play, and in particular, 41 was the one that stood out to me, and I was like, huh, because that's one of the names I was kind of looking at on their running back roster that I really didn't pay much attention to, and didn't know much about, so, um, the, the fact that he and Rashad Henry in half really a mile, turn out. left onto the I-85 South ramp to Greenville. That was very impressive. So, that being the case, I was really happy with the uh, the running backs today. The offensive line looks solid. Um, for the most part, up until they started doing like heavy blitzing. Once you saw heavy blitzing, that's when the quarterback started to uh, look shaky. And when I say look shaky, I mean a lot of overthrows, a lot of checkdowns, a lot of uh, this or that shake and bake moves that they really didn't need to do. You know, because they had people open. And that's not a slight against the pass rushing because the pass rushing was very impressive today. I was very happy with the pass rushing. Um, in particular, one of the uh, one of the newer guys that I turn was left onto the I eighty five South ramp. With, and again, I'll mention that name during the stream. At three. Continue on I-85 South but, for 20 miles. You know, I, I was fairly happy with the secondary today. You know, Dante Jackson in particular does what he usually does. You know, great pressure, break, great pass breakups. You know, and uh, I thought that was, you know, we saw a little bit of everything today, which was a very, very good sign. Um, yeah, it's the quarterback competition, you know, with with certain things going on um, internal clockwise and just making sure that you get the ball out of there, you know, instead of having to throw it away or throw it into the ground. That was the biggest issue with the offense today, under pressure, and... You know, credit to uh, Baker had a pretty good series at one point, and um, Sam was still struggling with the 707s, even with proper protection, and that's a bit of a concern because if you see like proper protection and the quarterback is not getting that ball to the right place. That's that's something we got to be concerned about. So in a way, I think the person that won today in that that two man battle was actually Baker. Um, as far as like finding his targets, but as far as like hitting his targets. And, um, under pressure.
Crusher, that would be Sam. Because once Sam settled in, it was like, zip, 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 zip. He had confidence throwing that ball to where he needed to put it. Now, depending on where he put it, that's the dangerous part. Because you got you got one on ones versus Dante Jackson. You got one on ones versus uh, some of these uh, people like Xavier Woods. You know, and you got to place that ball perfectly. Otherwise, these guys ain't gonna catch it. It's gonna get knocked down. And another issue I've got is the fact that when you look at PJ, he didn't even get the ball over the line half the time. I will give him credit. He did redeem himself with that touchdown. But, you know, the ones that didn't get across the offensive line, that's scary because every one of those got tipped away by a defensive lineman. And I was warning him about that last year at training camp. Y'all remember this. You know, it went from way overthrown in hospital balls now to get not getting it over the line. And that's not good. I, I don't see him making, you know, the 53 doing that. I think Matt Corral has got him beat on that right now. Matt Corral is throwing a couple of solid ones, you know, but mostly he's struggling too. I mean, we'll see what happens when these guys get out there in pads. But um, right now, that quarterback competition is looking a little sloppy. I'm not going to lie to y'all. And if that quarterback competition stays that way for the next 10, 10 to 15 days, we're in trouble. Point blank, we're in trouble for the 22 season. And frankly... As many of y'all have heard me say, I think 22 is going to be a wash anyway. So I'm not too worried about that. What I'm worried about is the development of the players. And I did see some very good development from um, the players that I was expecting to see it from. Uh, such as uh, Terrence Marshall Jr. Um, you know, pushing his limits. I was expecting to see that recovery from Ian Thomas. I saw that today. Good job, Ian. Proud of you. Um, you know, Brian Burns putting up that, that speed on that pass rush. Let's go, my dude. You know, I, I saw a lot of good things today, man. So, I'm very happy with it. Um, and a lot of those positions. I think the strength of our O-line right now is going to be run blocking. Because I saw some really, really good run blocks. Real good run blocks. And I think we should get uh, number 41 involved a little bit, that, that running back, for uh, pass blocking as well for certain situations. And the reason I say that is he was able to... Uh, quickly get his feet feet and hands in the right spot and managed to for the most part shut down the defensive end you know a starting defensive end it might have been a second stringer I'm not entirely sure who it was you know if I had video I'd be able to find out you know running the tape back but I was very very impressed with that you know that made me happy um, so I'd like to see that happen this this team's looking okay you know defensively I think like I pointed out in the C3 podcast last night um, this secondary looks real good real good Shout out to Unk, the uh, YouTuber, that said that he thinks that they're going to get 20 interceptions this year. From 
what it looked like with that pass deflection today, I was very impressed with that. You know, I think we're going to get a lot of pass deflections. I don't know about interceptions, but now, now I'm starting to lean towards pass deflections rather than interceptions, which, you know, kind of goes against what the coaches are looking for this year is turnover, created turnovers. So we'll find out how that shapes out. You know, but right now the push is on creating turnovers. Um, another thing you're going to notice today, if you were there today, is the footwork and technicality. Because Steve Wilkes is very, very disciplined when it comes to that stuff. And he will get the most out of these players on defense doing that. Um, the biggest concern is um, coverage-wise when it came to Steve Wilkes' defense, though. So that's what I'm looking for, the linebackers to kind of step up there. And let's see what happens. You know, that's the next step. Um, as far as the wide receivers, let's uh, let's keep that that momentum going. Uh, pass rushers, keep the momentum going. You know, um, instead of just making one play on defense, let's make two. You know, if you're Xavier Woods, you know, you know, keep pushing those boundaries, and I love to see it. You know, that these are great things. Never be satisfied if you're a player. Never be satisfied with what you just did. There's another day to push yourself even further as you go along. You know, there's always another day. As long as you are on that roster and you got a chance of making that roster, there's another chance to, to push that boundary and, and have another great day. You know, and keep that momentum going. Get those positive uh, traits going. Keep that momentum going in any way possible. Create good habits. And I think these guys are starting to do that. Um, I've been to two of the four training camp days so far, and I've seen that so far. In those three days, you know, I've seen the development go towards that direction, and I'm very pleased with that. Um, I think we still have a good bit to do in camp to get to where we want to go to, you know, and get this 53-man roster to where we want it to be, but as of right now, I'm very pleased with the progress. Um, and for those that were struggling today, you know, the, the players that I pointed out that were struggling today, there's always another day of training camp, you know, to redeem yourself, to get out there and, and, and push those boundaries and start setting good, good examples for the rookies. And if you're a rookie, just start setting better habits, you know, and, and getting out there and learning from the bigger guys, you know. Give them a phone call. Give, go out to lunch with these guys, you know, even on your day off. You know, let's build some chemistry. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to live with these guys in this dorm for about 15 days, man. you got an opportunity, a rare opportunity to do this. And that's what I love about training camp being in Spartanburg is it feels like college. You know, you're living in those dorms. You get to eat, eat, sleep, do whatever, work out together as an entire unit, as an entire team. And a lot of those trips out, you know, to other colleges when you were in college, if you remember that, if, you know, if you're an older player, that's what it felt like, didn't it? You know, you got to you got to hone in that chemistry with these guys. And with other teams, you don't see that as much because they practice indoor in, indoors in facilities, you know, they don't get that type of uh, repage that we get. 
you know, we got to go out there in a hot 98 sun, which is a good thing. That tests us, you know, to be able to handle games in Texas and in uh, places that are really hot, you know. Uh, so that's a really good thing. You know, anything that we do deals with the weather. And that's a positive thing. But you don't see, like, there... A lot of these teams, like, grouping up in, like, dorm rooms and stuff like that. They they live at home, like, 30 minutes away from, from the stadium they're practicing at, you know? So you don't get that with other teams. So take advantage of that opportunity. You know, use that opportunity to really connect with these guys. Is my advice. Um... I like that Steve Wilkes is bringing back those technical skills, the hands, the footwork, the uh, the no-nonsense way of doing things. It's so great, man. Like, we have missed this on this team for a long, long time. We have missed this. We haven't had that.